everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm here with our teaser and they've sent me some amazing goodies to review with you. So we have some of their new ultra fine glitters, we have their alcohol markers, and I know you're all excited to hear about those. And we also have their watercolors. So our teaser offer products at a great price point. Now I've used their equivalent of real brush markers in the past, I've used some of their other watercolors in the past, so I'm excited to see some of these new products. What we're gonna do is we split this into three pieces. So we'll look at the glitter markers, uh, the ultra fine glitters. We'll then look at the alcohol markers and then we'll look at the watercolors and the brush pens. And I just wanted to review them for you, show them, show you how they work and kind of we'll play with them. I've got some stamps here. I've got some of my favorite adhesives. We'll kind of see how they fit into my crafting and I'll give you my opinions. Now, as you always know, I do tell you if a company sends me the product. So I didn't pay for these. They did send them to me. But as always, I'll give you my honest thoughts and opinions. So let's dive in and take a look. So first up, let's look at the glitter. Now they sent me a couple of different things. We have some of the holographic chunky glitters. You get two of those in a package and I have three different ones. And then I also have 54 different glitters. They come in an easy pour jar here and these are fantastic. So you know I love to add a little bit of bling. I'm interested to see what easy pour means, but again, all at a great price point. So the two holographic glitters here, you get two of these for $9.99, and then the 54 you get for uh, $34.98 plus, we have an exclusive Arteza coupon code available to everyone, not just our Perks members. You can check that out in the video description too. Plus they sent me this mixed media paper to work with. So you get 11 by 14, you get two of these in a pack. I put one to the side because they're pretty big to work with. They're 110 pounds. It has a light texture in it as well, but they're perforated. So you can either grab a piece of paper out, which is what I'm gonna do here, and then I can take the perforations off if I want to when I'm ready to use it. Or what I tend to do with these pads is I take them to my FedEx store and then I get them to cut them down because uh, I can get them cut into card front size pieces or I get them cut into quarters and then I work with them after that. So we're gonna work on here. I'm gonna work with some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive because you know that's my favorite way to work. And you can either uh, add your patterns in, you could use those pretty pink posh stamps and add those patterns, or you could put this adhesive through a stencil. I showed you how to use that recently. So you can put some dots down, we can add squiggles, you can add all sorts of different ways of working. So I also have my tiny trays because you know when I work with glitter, that's one of my favorite ways to work. So let's open these up. This is the two holographic chunky glitter. It has fairy dust and moonstone inside. There's also a little QR code on the side here, which is fab. 10% off your first purchase, but as I say, we have a coupon code. You'll want to save that 10% off another purchase. And then you also have helpful tips and tutorials on here. Just scan this with your phone camera and a link will come up as to how to get to those. And then I'm going to tip these out on the side here. So these are the two we have in this package. Aren't they gorgeous? And they all come in these nice little jars. So you can store these in your drawers. And of course they're easy to see what you've got. Then we have this here that has the Electra in, and this one's called Mermaid Rain, which I love the sound of this one here. Then we have Diamond and Fancy. So let's play with these chunky ones first. I'm just opening up the sides here. So we have, that's Fancy, and then I'm just going to tap out the diamond. So these are all holographic, and they're a little more on the chunky side. Um, We'll look in here. So you can see here, if I open these up, we've got some different textures in here. We've got different sizes of glitter in here. And I know some of you don't like working with glitter because you say it's messy. Well, I have some tips for you here. So you can see I've put down my adhesive first. My favorite adhesive to work with is the Nouveau uh, Deluxe because I find it's the stickiest. And you can see there, aren't they beautiful? So I'm just going to pop some of these off to the side. I'm gonna work with this mermaid because I just love the name. So when I want to work with my glitter, I just tip down what over any adhesive I want to work with. And then I have these tiny trays. Again, I'll link these in the video description for you. 
just give it a good tap. Another tip that you can do, and I didn't think to grab it beforehand, is if you use your anti-static embossing tool beforehand, you'll stop a lot of this extra cling on the side here. Um, and you really will find that that um, helps save on the mess. But that tiny tray just helps you get everything back in there. Any excess, just a tap in the trash can, a little bit of a brush, and that will help that disappear. Now to get rid of the excess that I have on my paper, let me show you how I would do that. So again, if I'd used my anti-static tool, I'd have a lot less on my paper. But if you take your surface sweep, you can just then start brushing that aside. I'm a little bit more dubious because of course my glue is still wet. The other option I have is to just pop it over a trash can and give it a flick and you see how quickly that's all gone there. And I mean, that was super easy to do too. So that's another way to work with them. I'm gonna pop just a couple of lids back on here uh, just because I don't want to knock over my glitter and I am a bit of a clumsy crafter, so I do tend to uh, like to put the lids back on quickly. I really like these jars too, because they've got the clear bottom. So when I'm gonna store these, I would store them upside down so that I could see what was inside of them in my drawers. I think that will make it much, much easier to work with. But beautiful colors, I say you get two for the 9.99, and then we have that fab coupon code for you. And you can get Arteza in the UK and the US, so it's available everywhere, lots and lots of uh, options for purchase on there. So I'm just gonna pop these back on. And then we can have a look at these 54 pack. And I'll say, you can get 54 of these glitters for 30, under $35, which I just think is amazing value. So let's open this up. It has a little seal on the bottom. So I'll grab my favorite scissors, of course. So let's give that a snip and you can see inside here. So look how nicely, and I'm sure I will be storing them like this too. So you can see in here, we've got a nice rainbow already. So if I lift one of these up, this is how they come. So this is the gold. Now, one thing you could of course do is uh, turn this storage piece upside down, which is what I probably will do, and store them that way up. And then I'm gonna know exactly what colors I have in my pot here. To the side, if I kind of tilt it slightly, you can see what colors I have in here. So I can see I've got pinks and greens and things like that. Really pretty colors. Again, same tips. You could pop your de-static tool down. That will save you some of that cling. But we can just pop some of this down. You could, of course, use double-sided adhesive tape too. You can die cut that double-sided adhesive. I'll pop some of my favorites in the video description for you. One of my favorites is the tonic one because it die cuts so nicely. So you can die cut words and then make your own glitter cardstock. You don't have to keep a ton of those things in stock. You can then of course do ombres and all sorts of fun things like that too. You can uh, make it match. You can do double dips. You could do like a 4th of July, red, white, and blue. Uh, you can do so many different fun techniques. And if you're gonna do that, my top tip again is burnish. So add the glitter on, Give it a nice burnish, particularly with these microfine glitters, you'll really notice the difference in the results you get if you put that glitter on, give it a good burnish, and then you'll notice that you also get much less shed afterwards on your projects. So let's see what one of these looks like. I'm intrigued by this. It's called a Neon Taffy Pink. You know I'm all about the pink. I think you can tell that. It has these pieces on the top here. So you can see there's two different slots. I have something like a salt and pepper shaker, or I have the option to pour, so I can do either. They also have something for um, travel, so from where they're manufactured. So you just want to screw off the top piece and remove this first. Then we're gonna screw that lid back on. So then I have the option to either a light shake, so if you want a more controlled glitter option, or if you're going all out, you can just pour it on like this. And then to pop it back in again, you know I'm gonna use my tiny trays because these are the best invention ever. So we're gonna tip that back into our tiny tray. We're gonna give it a nice tap and then we can unscrew our lid. And because this has that nice funnel on there, we can just tap it back in again. So you can see there and off we go again. Any excess you've got, I have to say, I do tend to just kind of just pop it back into my trash can. Uh, Greg does prefer it to go in a trash can as opposed to going on the floor. So 
we try to make sure it goes in the bin as opposed to on the floor. But again, it sticks really nicely and I love using that Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. Another option you have is to use your Nuvo pens too. So if you have the Nuvo glue pen, whether you have the medium, the thick, the fine, you know I've done tons of videos on ways to use these. You can pop this down just like that. You can add your glitter on the top. You can also take your tape runner, do the same thing, just like this. Add a whole strip of glitter. Let's choose another color. Let's go with, this is grape purple. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have a purple car. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna open up one of these sides. I'm gonna grab my favorite craft tool, which is of course the craft pick. If you didn't see that video, well, check that top right hand corner because everyone needs a craft pick in their lives. And I'm gonna pop my lid back on again. And I am going to pour my glitter over. I'm gonna pop my lid on because if you didn't just see, I nearly dropped the bottle. So that's why we put the lids back on. Then we pour off our excess. And when we get a little overspill like this, this is how we deal with it. We pull our glass mat forward because that's why we craft on a glass mat as opposed to our table. We take our surface sweep and we sweep it into our tidy tray. So you see, these are the ways we craft with glitter with a low mess. So now we're gonna just tip this back in again, slowly. And you'll notice your glitter will fill up quicker. So you fill kind of halfway, give it a tap to get rid of any of that excess. As I say, that anti-static tool that you're used to using for your embossing will help you a lot. Go over your tidy tray, then you won't have all of these sticky bits like I did. I am gonna be, slightly naughty and put that over here because I want to get through the video because I have so many exciting things to share with you. But if you did go over your tidy tray first with that embossing de-static tool, you wouldn't have all of that stick to your thing. But again, look, I have those nice lines there. So you could do glitter plaid. How cool would that look on your Christmas cards? Tons and tons of things you can do with glitter. But again, just take your pen, do your lines or do it with your tape runner. Do it with your tear tape. I'll link up all the tonic options. And if you're a Hedgehog Hollow Perks member, you can get 10% off of all of those or 20% when we do those flash sales. Tons of reasons to join. Check the top right hand corner. And of course, grab your Arteza glitters. You can grab these. These are such great value. Less than a dollar for a whole bottle of glitter. They work out so cheap. 54 bottles for less than 35 bucks plus another coupon for you. For all of our viewers, not just our Perks members, check out the links in the video description below. Uh, you might have to press the arrow in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm loving these glitters. As I say, they're ultra fine too. So you've got lots and lots of options, ways to use them. They're great for working with kids too. So you can do kids crafts, whether it's for Mother's Day, 4th of July, holidays, Halloween. Um, maybe you're looking for things to do over the summer with the kids. I'll definitely be crafting with Maddie and Tilly with these. I like the fact I have kind of the salt and pepper shaker option too. Um, they can really kind of have fun, make a mess. You know, that's what we do with our three-year-olds. I think it's a really, really great way to go. Whether you're a scrapbooker, a card maker, mixed media artist, these are really great. I have a fab selection of colors in here. Now, I want to show you that alcohol markers, because again, Great price point, really good quality. That's our teaser's motto. So let's see how well they blend together. So now we're gonna look at those alcohol markers. Now, alcohol markers are definitely a personal preference. You might like Copics. I mean, I have a whole set. I love my Nouveau alcohol markers. You've seen me do tons of videos on them. I've talked recently about the Spectra Noir tri-blends. I also recently did a video on how to blend out and get the perfect blend with alcohol markers. You can check that out in the top right hand corner if you want to know some of my top tips. We also have a whole playlist on alcohol marker skill builders because a lot of it is just practice. However, what about these? Now you get 60 markers in this set and I went on their website just before I did this video and they're around about the $80 mark for 60 markers, which is amazing value. I mean, there's nothing like it, but how do they perform? Of course, we also, as I keep mentioning, we have that coupon code, check it out in the video description because our teaser's motto is all about giving you good quality supplies at an excellent price. So let's open up and see what we get. They also come in this fab storage case. And of course, as crafters, we all are 
love our storage. So they come in this fabric storage case. There's also on the back here, there's a little swatch guide as well. I mean, I think as crafters, I know I definitely do. I spend more time swatching and organizing my supplies than I definitely do crafting. Uh, but you can see here, I can open up my little case. And inside here, they are arranged. It makes my heart sing. They are in rainbow order. So I have my neutrals, I've got my blues, my greens, my yellows, my oranges, my pinks, my purples. And I have room for expansion because they know us so well. And of course, it all Velcros back together again. So they're a double ended marker. So I have two tips. They also have replaceable tips. You can get that option too. So I have a fine tip and I have a chisel tip. The fine tip has that ring on, so if you're used to using Copics, you'll know that that brush tip we usually use has a little ring on it, so you can tell the difference easily. It does have a numbering system on it, um, so if I look along here, I've got my A's, um, it starts off with rose red, and then it goes into here, I'm not entirely sure that there's um, the same system we used to with Copix or Spectre Noirs. They seem to kind of be an arbitrary system and there's nothing on the um, cardboard piece that really tells me how those colors go together. It tells me they're unique colors, they're blendable, alcohol-based, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there is, of course, our helpful tips. So you can scan this with your phone and you can go to their website and they'll give you even more tips on that. So it's well worth doing. And uh, you can say you've got that replaceable tips option too. So how do they blend together? Of course, that's the important part for crafters. So I'm gonna color a bit of a flower. And I grabbed here, of course, my Gina K Amalgam ink, my favorite ink for alcohol coloring and pretty much anything. I grabbed a new stamp because I'm trying to ink every stamp I own, although that is a challenge. This is the My Favorite Things Fresh Cut Flowers. I have my Misty here with my sticky grid. And if you don't know about my Misty tip by now, you definitely should go check that video out in the top right hand corner. I do not use magnets in my Misty, although this is a red rubber stamp, so I can't use this sticky grid. But it's all about how I never, ever, ever use magnets in my Misty and you would never use to need to use them again either. I think it's life-changing. So we're going to just ink this up with our amalgam ink. Amalgam ink is a hybrid base formula, so it's perfect for coloring, whether you're coloring with alcohol markers, watercolor inks, a bit of both. You can do everything all on one image with a hybrid ink. And it's a nice crisp, I'm just gonna touch in that little bit at the top there. It's a nice crisp ink, and uh, Gina also has just released some for no line coloring too, so you can get a nice variety of colors in the amalgam range. So I'm just gonna pull this out because we're gonna use it again later. And I'm gonna pop that to the side. So in the interest of doing a video, I want this to be quick. You can just let your amalgam ink dry, or if you want to work quickly, just give it a quick heat set. I'm using the Ranger Heat It Tool. This is the one I had to hand. You all know I have a Wagner heat tool. You could use that too. It's not gonna make any difference which one you use to heat set your ink. So let's go. Now, when you're also coloring with your uh, alcohol markers, you also want to put something underneath your coloring. It can either be printer paper or another piece of cardstock, both work fine. So I'm just gonna put another piece of cardstock underneath. The cardstock I'm using is the Tonic Ultra Smooth White. That's my favorite for coloring with alcohol-based markers because it has a little bit of a coating. It gives you a little bit more time to blend and for me, it gives me that really nice blend. You can also use something like the Copic Expressit cardstock. Um, whatever your personal preference is, for me, it's that Tonic Paper and Perks members, again, get their discount on that. So I'm going to grab a couple of these red shades. I'm gonna grab three because when I'm blending, three is my favorite uh, kind of trio to go with. So I'm using here watermelon pink, coral, and tomato red. Just gonna check that they're kind of the three that seem to go together best, seems so. Uh, so let's go with those. I'm just wondering whether I want to introduce a rose red. Now something else you can do when you are coloring together, I think I'm gonna skip out and do this one here. 
So I'm actually going to use Coral as my lightest shade, Tomato Red as my mid shade, and Rose Red as my darkest shade. So when you're coloring, the first thing you want to do is saturate with your lightest color. So I'm gonna just pick out this leaf here. So it's got a nice fine tip. Something I like already is the fact they do not squeak. Something I dislike about tri-blends from Spectra Noir is the fact they squeak. So again, I've got a nice blend going on. So you want to saturate with your lightest color. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna saturate this petal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the reverse side. So I need a little bit more ink because I don't have a complete image in my lightest color on the reverse side. That's what I want it to look like. So I really want it to be a nice saturated image of my petal on the reverse side. Now I'm gonna to go to my mid shade and I'm gonna start adding my texture in anywhere where I think I would want it to be a little bit darker. I'm also going to add it at the top here. And then I'm going to go back to my lightest shade and I'm going to blend out that middle area so I don't have any harsh lines. So far, blending really nicely together. Then I'm going to go to my darkest shade. And this is where I'm going to add in my darkest areas. So anywhere where I really want those darkest shadows, along the edge here maybe. Again, I've got a fine tip and I have a chisel tip option. Then I'm gonna go back to my mid shade. So that's my tomato color. And I'm gonna blend out between the darkest and the mid. And then I'm gonna go back to my lightest shade, that coral and I'm gonna blend again. And there I have a really pretty petal and I've got a beautiful shading between the three. I'm really impressed so far. So that's what I've got on there. Let's try three shades of green and see how our leaf comes out. So I'm going to do uh, three shades of green here. I'm gonna pick these three. These look like they go together nicely. So I'm picking a pale green, apple green, and cactus green. So again, I'm gonna color the base of my leaf. I want to saturate my color. I'm gonna do that check on the reverse side in a minute. Make sure I have everything colored in. I mean, you'll always hear the coloring, but it's not that squeak, squeak, squeak that you hear with some markers. And then we're gonna do that check on the reverse side. I have a nice colored image. Now we're gonna to go to our mid shade. Now, if I find out anything about that coloring system, we'll add that in on the bottom of the screen for you too. So I'm going over those veins, just adding a little bit more texture. And then I'm going back to my lightest and blending that out. They're blending really smoothly. Now I'm going into my darkest shade. Just adding those extra details. Back to my mid shade. I know I say this all the time, but this is the way you blend with alcohol markers and then back to my lightest shade. And again, I have a leaf with lots of detail, lots of beautiful veins in there, and I will color this whole image using these markers and we'll add that in for you. So you can now see kind of how that image looks. We've got lots of details in there, and I'm really impressed with these markers just from doing this little bit, and I'd say, we'll add in the whole thing afterwards. But so far, great. And as I say, you have a blender in there. Now, I always preach this about blenders. Blenders are not a blender pen. I wish they would label them as a blender pen. A blender pen is a bleaching pen. A blender pen is for when you get a bleed, for when you make a mistake, for when you go over a line. What you do is you take your blender pen 
And say for instance, you've gone over an edge, like they've got a little bit of green that's just gone over the edge here. You're gonna take that and you're gonna push that green back inside the line and it's going to remove that green. Your ble blender pen is a bleaching pen. It's not gonna blend colors together, it's gonna remove pens. It's great if you wanna do fur. If you do something, you can then go in and you can suck up some color and give your fur texture. That's what you're gonna use that blender pen for. But you do have one included. As I say, you've got neutrals in there, you've got your reds, you've got a good rainbow of colors. And I think for the price point, they are amazing. And of course, you've got extra savings in that video description. Now, I want to show you the watercolors. So we've got a really nice, well-rounded set of mediums to explore. So let's take a look. So finally, I have the watercolors to share with you. So we get 60 in a pack for 38.99. Again, great, great value. I'll be interested to see how they're gonna perform. Uh, and you can see on the top here, we have a fantastic rainbow. And for those of us who are not artists, they do tell us the light fastness, the transparency, you've got the pigment numbers on there, you've got all that information. So if you like swatching with something like the Waffle Flower Swatching Stamp Set, you can do that and all the information you need to fill out that stamp set is also on the top here. If you don't know about that stamp set, again, I'll put the links in the description below because as crafters, we love to swatch and organize. I know we're a breed all of our own, but we'll pop all those details below for you. They also sent me their water brush pack. Now this pack has six brushes in it. You've got three different um, of the different types of tip. You've got three of the finer tip and a small, medium and large. And then you've got three of the wider tip, again, small, medium and large. And I've got some top tips there for you. So let's open these up too. Again, you've got your QR codes on the back. You can scan those and get even more tips in there. And these are great for paper crafters, for artists. These are all artist grade materials. We're gonna open these up. So let's see what these are like. Now, you know I love my water brushes because whether you're working with children, whether you're working on the go to travel, whether you're working uh, in a studio, and I work between a couple of different studios, it's great because you don't have to have a bowl of water around, particularly when I have a three-year-old walking around who might knock that over. I just have a, a pen of water, which is fab. So when I open one of these up, we've got our lid here. You've got your uh, brush, which of course has individual bristles. So you're gonna get a really nice um, image when you start painting. You've got a push area, so you can push extra water through if you want to. And then you unscrew the barrel like this, and this is where we're gonna add water. Now, top tip for you. Now, you may be used to putting this under the tap, and then you fill it with water. And if you're anything like me, you fill it too full and then you end up with a fountain and you are also soaking wet. Well, no more with this tip. Take your Nuvo Fine Mist bottle, pop your nozzle in here and start squirting. You'll be amazed how quickly this fills up and you can just fill it up with water like this. And it's nice and controlled. Again, you can fill them on the go. So if you're painting in the park, painting with children, I've got it nice and full. Don't fill it all the way because you want a little bit of room for the valve to go in there. You can then just screw your lid back on and now you're ready to paint and go. So there's another top tip for you again. Links in the video description and Perks members get even more discounts, of course, on all those extra tonic supplies. Now let's open up this uh, Arteza box. Again, I love the fact that everything comes with extra storage. They do all come in the tube. So another thing you might want to do is pan these so that you have them ready to go. I of course didn't do that before the video because I wanted to unbox them and kind of have that experience with you on camera. But I do have an empty set of pans, which I grabbed here. Uh, so I do keep a couple of these spare. Again, I'll link this one up for you. This is a nice little travel set. But what I do is I take a little bit of uh, the tube. So you just take it like, like this and you squirt inside like this, fill it up, and then you're gonna leave it to cure and harden. And the reason you're gonna want to do that is then you have kind of the proper watercolor. You know, when we go out and we buy pans, that's how they do them. So you go through and you can just squirt them in, leave them to harden, off you go and you have a watercolor that's then going to just be water activated. For the sake of today, I'm gonna to pop some on my glass mat 
and we're just going to watercolour with them and that's going to work fine. But inside this box, if I lift out, I've got lots and lots of trays full of all of my beautiful colours. And again, you know, we can choose all of our colours out. And then of course you don't have to get the whole box out each time, you just get your tray of pans out really easy ready to go the other thing i like to do with my pans is i get a fine sharpie and i write on the side the color code so i might write a107 a105 etc etc um, these ones are magnetic so again they're great for on the go they don't have any of those hard clips and things they just go in and they're magnetic and they're not going to fall out on me which again i really really like about this set of pans plus you can get it in some really pretty colors. So that's another one of my top tips. But let's grab a couple of colors out. We're just gonna do some water coloring and see how we get on with them and how they kind of come out. Of course, I'm choosing some pinks and purples because you know what, I mean, what my favorite colors are. So let's just grab a few of those out. I'm gonna work on my Tim Holtz mat. I grabbed some of that Arteza paper that we were using earlier, that water, uh, that mixed media paper, just tore out another sheet. I'm gonna use that same My Favorite Thing stamp with my Gina K Amalgam Ink, because as I said, it's a hybrid ink, so I can use my alcohol markers and I can use my watercolors. I don't have to think whether I'm using pigment ink or dye ink or solvent ink. I just use the one type of ink. How cool is that? We don't have to think about ink types anymore. So I'm just gonna stamp this out with an acrylic block. Hope for the best. Perfect. Again, I'm just gonna give it a quick dry because I'm an impatient crafter and I don't want to wait for my ink to dry. I just want to, just want to go. Just like this. So again, let's give it a quick go. It's fine. So this is a 110 pound weight paper. It's not a watercolor paper, but it does have a nice pressed um, texture to it. And I think it's gonna hold up to water pretty well. So with watercolor, you have a few different options. You can do a wet on wet technique, you can do wet on dry. Of course, you've got lots of different options. I'm gonna go with a final tip of those uh, watercolor pens. So I'm gonna unscrew this here. I do like the options of all the different tips on there. Not many companies, of course, offer that. You usually get maybe one or two tips, but the fact here that I have that option of multiple tips is really nice. And of course the fact I can just fill it here in my craft room. I don't have to go out to the kitchen or the bathroom and get soaking wet is also really nice. So I filled that up. Something here I have is nice is I have these rubber areas. So if I want to just add water onto my palette area, I can give that a nice squeeze too. As I said, ultimately I would like to have panned these out, but I haven't done that. So I'm just going to give these a squeeze onto my palette area of my mat. I'm just gonna squeeze these colors out and we're gonna give them a nice go. Nice and creamy. And you absolutely can just use these straight from the tube. You do not have to pan them at all. That's a personal preference thing. And I always say with crafting tools, it's all about personal preference. You can use them any way you want. You can do this every single time. Something else that I often do is I have an ice cube tray that has a silicone top. Again, I'll link one in the video description. I pop some of my most used colors in one of those, and that's what I tend to use as a pan. That works really well too. You can do that completely. You could just use a piece of palette paper. I'll link those pads in the description. They work really well as well. Whatever works for you in your craft room. It's a total personal choice. So let's take a little bit of water. We're gonna take this beautiful pink. Look how nice and creamy that is. I am not an artist, so do not judge my painting skills, but we're just going to go in here. So if I use this, you can see this is a really lovely thick paint on here. I mean, I could do a really thick coating. And then I could go and add extra texture using a darker color. Look how beautiful those reactions and spiderings are. Now, if I wanted to do something with more water, I can do that too. I can do washes. If you can see, I'd get a beautiful purple wash in the background here. So I can add background pieces. I could also do very light petals like this. 
The one thing with watercolours is you tend to want to work with your lighter shade and then work darker. Thin coats always, I was told, work best. As I say, I'm not an artist. These are just tips that I've picked up from watching videos. But you can see I can also go very thin and light. And then I can go back just with the same colour. This is not a different colour. I'm just going in areas where I've added less water. And that way I'm adding texture. Watercolour will only go where you've added water. So you can see it's not bleeding out. It's not going anywhere I don't already have water. I could go with a completely solid piece where I've not added any water at all and I can get really solid pieces of colour. So you can get lots and lots of different techniques and textures just from one colour. You don't need lots of colours at all. But in here you have 60 different colours. So from those 60 colours, you can mix colours together. You can add water to get lighter colours, add white to add different translucency. So within those 60 colours, you have hundreds and hundreds of different options. And at that kind of price point and with your coupon, you're never gonna need another watercolour. And as I say, I'm really impressed there. I've got some beautiful kind of reactions going on. I've done lots of videos you can check out on the channel about adding different things in. I did one um, recently with watercolour pens and you can go and use all of those techniques with these. And of course you've got lots more paint than you get in a watercolour pen. So these are even better value um, with those. I added salt to some, I've added rice, I've added bleach into them. So many different options that you can do with your watercolour. So go explore the channel, check out all those different options and videos. Um, lots of things available to you. So I really love these. I think the pens are great too. As I say, you've got six different tips to work with. So whether you want to create a watercolour wash when you might want to use those wider tip backgrounds, these are gonna be perfect for that. You can see if I can pull this tip off, she says. So I've got this one here that has a wide background. And then I have this one here that has an even wider one. They're gonna be perfect for your watercolor wash backgrounds. I've got this super fine tip. You can see all those details I added into that petal. Um, and then that easy way to fill it. This is definitely the way to go. Don't do it over the tap because how many times I've been covered in water, I couldn't count anymore. So I had to find another way. Um, you've got tons of colors in here. You've got lots of options for mixing. As I say, if you pan them up, You'll also find it even easier for traveling. I think it's a fab way to go. Lots and lots of things you can do there. Um, but I've been really impressed with these Arteza products. So as I say, check out the links in the video description, check out that amazing coupon code they've given all of our Hedgehog Hollow viewers too. If you want additional savings, join our perks programs. There's lots of reasons to join. Details in that video description below for you to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. We have daily videos here at Hedgehog Hollow. Tips, tricks, tutorials, storage ideas, so many different things for you to join us for. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and I will see you again tomorrow for another video. Happy stamping everyone. Enjoy your new Arteza purchases. Bye.